Hey, I'm Darlene, and this is part two of my first impression on the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16. In the last video, I did an unboxing and a few quick sketches and scribbles to test this device. In this video, I'm doing a longer test, spanning five hours. I'm just drawing a portrait like how I would normally on paper. I'm using a Photoshop brush that mimics pencil and a very small brush size, which is less than one millimeter in diameter, because I really want the portrait to come out looking as close as I can get it to a traditional pencil portrait. My initial thoughts on this tablet and stylus was that it was much more enjoyable than working with pencil and paper, a medium I've used for drawing ever since I can remember. These are my new opinions after having worked on it for a much longer time. As I'm laying down the initial sketch using very light lines, it's apparent that the stylus does require a tiny bit of downward pressure to get the faintest stroke to appear, which did bother me during the start of this portrait, because I can be a very, very light sketcher when working on something very seriously. So this is definitely something to get used to. Other times, I'm light to medium handed, which works with the stylus perfectly fine. If you don't sketch as lightly as me, I really don't think you'll notice it at all. After my hand adjusts to the pen pressure, which doesn't take very long, working with the stylus does feel very natural because of how easy it is to create smooth value transitions or gradients, not to mention how smooth it feels gliding along the glass. It's just those very faint light lines that take a bit of practice to get down. Now it's really difficult to shade smoothly using a fine tip, whether it's digitally or traditionally. So I'm really impressed at how tightly I can shade with this stylus, considering I set the brush diameter to such a tiny size. Just so you have an idea, the diameter is less than one millimeter when I'm at 100% zoom. For smoother shading, I would increase the Photoshop brush size quite a bit more, but I just love the pencil effect that it's creating right now. When I'm shading large areas of skin, and I'm trying to move as quickly as possible, I do notice a slight lag. Though there are some areas that need improvement, it's still the most comfortable, enjoyable, and accurate digital drawing experience I've ever had. Something I just love about working on the Cintiq Pro is the touch option which makes it really easy to quickly do things like zoom in to work on the finer details such as hair, stubble, wrinkles, etc. I also love that I can rotate the canvas, just like how I would rotate my sketchbook to shade more easily, which relieves so much hand strain. And the canvas can always be reset by double tapping two fingers at once. Touch capability is such a useful feature to have, and it just makes the drawing experience flow so naturally. When I'm drawing, the touch feature is disabled. So it's very rare that I click on things or move something around by accident, but it does happen. Nothing annoying though. During the whole five hour process, I accidentally deselected the layer with my knuckle about three times. A Photoshop dialog box would come up to alert me. It's only a minor annoyance, not enough for me to turn it off though. Yeah, so there are a bunch of other gestures you can program as well, which I glossed over in part one. Again, drawing on this glass is really amazing. I came from drawing on the Intuos Pro, which has some medium texture to it, which feels like paper, but I much prefer this smooth surface. One thing I'm gonna really miss from the Intuos Pro is the touch ring which allows me to easily change the brush size. There is an add-on I can get for the Cintiq Pro called the Express Key Remote, which has the ring as well as additional express buttons, but it looks really clunky, especially for the 16-inch model, which I'm working on right now. So in part one, I mentioned how the tablet got very warm in the top middle section of the screen. I didn't actually pay attention to the heat this time, I guess because I was so drawn into the portrait. But whenever I turn this tablet on, it gets warm fairly quickly, but never hot, and it's always cool to the touch on the back side. There are two fans on the back to help cool the device, and they do make a low level of noise, just a soft sound in the background.
The eraser end of the stylus is very handy for erasing less meticulous work. I love using it to erase things quickly without much care. But for a portrait like this, I want control over every pixel that's erased, so I like to use the pen tip for that, because the eraser end is much larger. So it's just like how I prefer a kneadable eraser over a plastic one for erasing small details. Regarding parallax, there's almost none at the center of the screen, but as I approach the edges, it can increase up to 1mm. I thought it would bother me, but I actually didn't take notice of it the whole time I was drawing. I think it's because most of the time, I'm drawing closer to the center rather than the edges of the screen. I was really excited to check on the nib condition after using it for the past week and a half, because with the textured screen of the Intuos Pro, the nibs didn't last very long. So I was curious how well they'd hold up on the Cintiq Pro screen. And just a reminder, this screen is literally as smooth as butter, and I love it so much. After a week and a half, there's only a tiny, tiny amount of wear on this, and I've been using it to draw for more than 6 hours in total. The tablet is very sturdy. Since the legs are so solid, I've never experienced any wobble or shake, which, when I think about it, all display tablets should be this way. The screen is set to the highest brightness level. Now throughout the entire 5 hour portrait, I felt no eye strain from it at all, and my eyes are very sensitive to light. Again, I'm really happy with the display quality, but I'll have to find a way to get 4K resolution to display on this, because I want to see how much better it can possibly get. After finishing the portrait and wiping the screen free of smudge marks, it seems that the stylus has not left a single mark on the screen. It's completely, absolutely scratch-free, looking just like new. So that's my opinion on the Cintiq Pro 16 so far, after having it for a week and a half. It's still my favorite drawing tablet, and yes, I still prefer to use it over pencil and paper, which was my first love. I'll definitely still continue to post traditional graphite tutorials, but you can also expect a few tutorials done on the Cintiq Pro. The Cintiq Pro 16 is such an incredible drawing tablet that it's just so much fun to draw on. I'm also extremely pleased with the final outcome, mimicking a realistic pencil and paper portrait. Except for the background where I kind of cheated and went for an airbrush look. But that's the beauty of working digitally. I can use one tool to mimic a multitude of mediums. If you want to check out more info on this awesome display tablet, you can find the links down below. Wacom is doing a promotion in October on the 13-inch version of this, and they're dropping the price by 200 If you're in the US, you can pay monthly installments, 12 months interest-free. So make sure to check that out. And thanks for watching.